You talk about intelligent design? Look at the human body. It's a waste processing plant near a recreation area. How intelligent is that? And they say the platypus was an animal designed by committee. Was the human body designed by committee? Was there a group of guys who designed it? Was a guy going, Tom, do you have those designs for the human reproductive system? I do, Ted. Let's show you what we came up with. Normally, with the mammal penis, we have the retractable. We decided to do something different for the, mammal, the male penis for the human. We call it the collapsible. Kind of fun. <laughs> and look at this. Murray came up with the idea of making the covering optional. Thank you, Murray. Way to go. <laughs> and we take the covering off. It's a little sharp, a little pointy. We need something on the top to soften it up. Bob, what was your idea? A mushroom cap. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> we put the mushroom cap on the top, and it's kind of cool, because when it's retracted, it looks like a little toadstool. And when it's erect, like a little soldier. Thank you. And Tim put a piece of string up at the top. Thank you, Tim. I guess to tune it. Thank you, Tim. And we run the semen out the top and urine through. We also run urine through there. We call it multitasking or coming and going. <laughs> kind of a fun concept. And uh, initially, we uh, just had the sperm stored inside the penis itself like a toothpaste tube. <laughs> gone. So we needed something to store it in and produce it. What was your idea, Carl? Nuts. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> initially, we used walnuts. We've had good luck with those in the past. And uh, the human males are going, we can't sneak up on the females. And we go, what do you mean? Listen. <laughs> Got it. Forget the coconuts. Let's try something different. Bob, what was your idea to replace them? Balls. Balls. <laughs> Who doesn't like balls? What fun. Initially, we used three balls. And here's some of the tests with the three balls. They were going everywhere. The male was like playing with the balls, playing with the balls. And we went, we better put those in a bag. So. <laughs> We decided to make a bag, and the only thing we had lying around was some old turkey neck. I said, use it, let's try it. So, uh, we put the balls in the turkey neck, and um, it's ugly. I think, uh, yeah, next to the asshole, it's one of the uglier things we made, really. Uh, and we got some negative feedback from the females. They're going, we're not going down there unless you cover that up. Okay. So we put some garnish around it. And uh, initially we made the hair straight. The females, my eyes. Okay. Curly, we put curly hair. And uh, initially we put the hair everywhere, even the top of the penis. And um, it looked like my Uncle Phil. Like, hey, how are you? So we uh, this went with a topiary thing, which was kind of fun. And, and then the females went, we'll go down there now. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Which is cool because you can start the penis orally, thank you. Uh, manually, thank you, Manuel, for finding that out. Uh, finger in the ass, Ted found that out. He said it was an accident. <laughs> Kidder. And if you play with the balls, the penis likes that. It's kind of fun. But we did find out a negative thing about the balls. If you hit them really hard, it's a total system reset. It's like... If it was a slot machine, it would pay. It was kind of rough. But that's essentially the design for the penis. Initially, we gave the male about 800 sperms, and those were gone in a millisecond. And now we give him eight to nine billion, and he shoots them everywhere. Uh, tits, drapes. We found some on the ceiling. Those are the overachievers. We hope some make it to the vagina. In terms of the vagina, Carl's in charge of the vagina project. Carl, what did you come up with? Well, normally with the mammal vagina, you have the genital slit or opening. We decided to accessorize it. What, what did you accessorize it with, Carl? Curtains. <laughs> we, uh, we just thought it makes it less of an opening and more of a show, really, kind of. And we had some old lips lying around. We said, try those. Let's give it a go. And initially, we made it horizontal, and um, the damn thing talked. It was weird. And the first time it talked, the males were going, I'm not going down there if it talks. I've already got one opinion up here. I don't need a second one. Fine. So now we made it vertical and now it just farts. So and the first time it went over, it was like, easy, big fella. And the asshole got offended saying, that's my job. Okay, hold on. Yours will smell. Not to worry, not to worry. But we needed something kind of special. One last little thing that will really work. And Clint came up with a brilliant idea. And I think we're going to name It's kind of wonderful. Clint, what was your idea? A doorbell. Thank you, Clint. You ring the doorbell, the curtains open. It's kind of fun. Some guys can't find it. Others don't know when to stop ringing it. 
But you ring the doorbell, the curtains open, the penis goes inside, and Tom worked out some choreography for the balls. It's kind of fun. That's really... It gets everything ready to go. And the sperms fly out up into the human female. She carries the egg. Normally we gave it, we tried first giving the egg to the male. He kept losing it. We went, fine. We gave it to the female. She carries it. And then we thought the male will be in charge of feeding the infant. We gave the human male uh, two uh, breasts. And the male was like, huh, okay, nipples, that's all. We thought the female will be in charge of feeding the infant too. So we gave her six breasts like a mammal. And the male was like, ha, 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 ha. Two hands, two tits, that's it. So the female will carry the infant to term and it will come out through the curtains and they get wide, like Broadway. And she will also feed the infant, the male will assist. But we do have one major design flaw. We've tried to wire the penis to the conscience and it keeps short-circuiting.